What is up, my internet friends and family? I am Charmix, and today I'm going to be reacting to Sex, Drugs, and Steven Universe. What's up with Steven's head here? His face looks entirely too big for his head, and his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. And this face certainly doesn't look much better. How Lion even seems to agree. Also, these two avocados, which look like they were one whole avocado that was cut in half, doesn't look right either. One half of this avocado looks way bigger than the other half. They don't look like they belong together at all. Also, also, why is this one avocado a lighter shade than the other ones? Like, yeah, it was probably drawn that way because Lion was gonna interact with it, but it still looks off in comparison. Or if somebody has already eaten all of your tuna. Oh, Lion, that, <laughs> that was a lot of tuna. And then you just threw it up into my shoes. Also, the outside of these avocado slices are very dark in this shot, only to lighten up in the next shot. Something tells me the Crooniverse passed these shorts to their C team, but I can't quite tell what. Click here for the how to make sushi rice video. Uh, I miss YouTube annotations. These look more like carrots than cheese puffs. Although, after a little bit of research, the cheese puff thing was actually a recipe Rebecca Sugar's brother made up, and she put it into the show. That's honestly pretty neat. No, I don't think I'd enjoy a dog nut. That's fucking gross. So I was originally going to use a YouTube upload from Cartoon Network for this short, before realizing I had a higher quality version on my hard drive. That original video had an end screen, and holy shit, what is up with this weird ass art here? Peridot is back to her old homeworld design, Lapis is just her stock art with the eyes changed ever so slightly, and Garnet is holding the pieces of herself together for dear life. I'm not gonna add any sins for this, just wanted to share this weird image with you. We are on frame one of this short, and Amethyst looks like she's plotting a murder, Steven looks like he just read the most bullshit thing in his life, and Garnet looks like a man-spreading blockhead. Also, Amethyst's lips look swollen for pretty much this entire short. Famous! Connie, come on, the best part's coming up. It's fine, you guys are already doing a great job. Come on, it's your turn. Are you sure? Yeah, go on, have fun. Thanks, Garnet. Haven't you noticed? Wow, that karaoke version is waiting very patiently for someone to come up and sing the chorus. What, does the karaoke version of this song just have like five bars of instrumental before the next part? And now Pearl's staring off into space, probably having a war flashback about Rose or something. <laughs> Steven, personal space. Also camera etiquette, you're probably fogging up the lens. One of Steven's game cases is the wrong way around in this shot, and I am irrationally angry about it. I even stayed off the internet all day because I didn't want to get spoiled <laughs> because they're food. Tears of sorrow, tears of joy. Considering the lack of any kind of filtering over crying breakfast friends over there, Steven's totally going to get his ad revenue stolen by Spinner Broadcasting. But frankly, all jokes aside, this is genuinely a really playful, tasteful jab at the Steven Universe fanbase. And it even has some jokes at the Crooniverse's expense by making fun of their hiatuses and narrative quirks. This is probably my favorite of this collection of shorts. It's really well done. Firstly, I love all the references packed into this laptop. All of the different names for things like Steam, WordPad, Chrome, and all of the game references on the right there are really nice. However, A, why does Steven even have Connie's laptop in the first place? And B, why is he choosing to video chat with Peridot and Lapis when they're literally just a warp away? This feels unnecessary and also inferior to just being around them. Oh no, Steven, what happened? How did he get trapped in there? Didn't Lapis literally send a video message through the Wailing Stone back in the message? She should know what a video message looks like, and as far as she knows, this is very similar. And can't she see herself and Peridot on the screen somewhere? Why is she not commenting on that? I'll save you, Steven! If she thinks that Steven's gem is somewhere inside of this device, why does she think smashing it is a good idea? She seemingly knew how to be freed from the mirror she was in before, so wouldn't she want to try and pry it open to find his gem rather than take a chance on smashing it? These are the strings in standard tuning, and the dots are for your fingers. 
Uh, okay. Why doesn't Steven explain what the X's and O's under the key are? Me and my co-writer sure have no idea. And it's weird that he explains the strings and tuning and where your fingers go, but not the most vague thing there. The song sounds really good though, like it's probably in my top 10 Steven Universe songs of all time. And the fact that it's in a short is really surprising. When Steven transitions from his normal singing voice to the high note, it sounds like the editor spliced two takes together and didn't quite hide it well enough. It's like Steven's line starts part way into the word up. It doesn't really sound natural. Could just be me hearing something that isn't there, but after years of editing voice lines, I tend to pick up things like that. Okay, I love you. Bye. Oh God, I can just hear the parasocial relationships forming after that line. <laughs> 